Catherine went back to her dressing room humming as she was about to grab her coat. She wasn't the least bit tired. Visions of city, exploring new sites and gaining experiences made her giddy with excitement. It will end the night on the best note, she was sure. A small knock interrupted her thoughts. Who's there? It's going to be Guilherme. Who else is it going to be? Catherine turned around and a cheerful smile froze on her face. What does it say? Just a genius at reading minds. The Marquis peeked from the open door and stepped inside. Hello, Kath. A tingling passed through Catherine's neck. Although she was aware he had returned, this was the first time she'd seen him in two years. After she rebuked his intentions of wooing her. Catherine shook her head at the memory. They grew up together. It was normal f to develop feelings for someone you shared most of your life with, was it not? Yet Catherine had promised herself not to dabble with the Marquis. You're already fucked. <laughs> Just saying. With the rumours, with all the rumours and the past flings, it felt like she knew too much. Too complicated, she had reasoned. The rumours were still alive in some circles. But hadn't Guilhem come clean with his romantic escapades? Hadn't he vowed to be faithful since he had made his intentions clear? I mean, I can do that. Anyone can do that. Ubisoft say once a year they care about PC gamers. At doesn't mean they're going to, it just means they've said it aloud. <laughs> Who to believe? Perhaps it was possible that... Catherine pushed away the insinuation of that last thought and rearranged her face into a merry smile. She curtsied. Fuck me, you had all of that time to think? I had all those different things and he hasn't noticed a thing. <laughs> Whatever. My lord, my quiz, thank you for coming. That last bit came out too loud in her ears. It felt like her voice was compensating, she suppressed a groan. I hope you found the show satisfactory? My Lord Marquis? What happened to Gilly Monster? At once the memories flooded her mind. That used to be her greeting every time she had visited him back then. She would scream that when she saw him right before she flung her arms around his neck. Catherine didn't know what to do. Suddenly her hands, the hands that never betrayed her, felt like they belonged to someone else. She cleared her throat and felt the smile harden on her face. That looks evil. Pardon my past slights, sire, I was a precocious child. After all, I must give my due respects to the sponsor of this event. Oh, come on, he's going to see straight through this. Thank you, by the way, it didn't have to be in so extravagant. Wasn't it your dream to play in Paris, Kath? I thought your debut would be the perfect opportunity to fulfil that dream. The Marquis stepped into her quarters and closed the door. Catherine flinched, afraid that the small room would draw them even closer. She's already blushing. She's so fucked in more ways than one. Just the effect he wanted, probably, the sly fox. She floundered for a bit and contended herself in fussing with the flowers on the table. She should chase him out. Why wasn't she chasing him out? Mert, Catherine. I, I didn't think you'd be attending tonight, sire. Though we all know that's a lie. Weren't you travelling? Yes, I was. But I wouldn't miss your concerto for the whole of France. Guilherme stepped forward. And it seems my investments were well placed. Okay, that line could work, but not with that face. What is that face? Come on, it looks like someone's thrown his rock at you. Jesus. Glim drew closer to Catherine, so near that she could smell the mint in his breath. He appeared to reach out for her face, but changed direction at the last minute. Ooh, these flowers are from the Duke. How pretty. He examined the car, dangling a hair away from Catherine's ear, trying to look fascinated by the piece of decorative paper. Then he stepped back, grinning like an idiot. Eh, he really has great taste. Where did you learn that, muckhead? If he thought that kind of ploy would make us soon, then he was dead. Deed? No, he was dead wrong. In fact, all it made her want to do was wipe that stupid grin off his face with the backside of a vase. That's called murder. Um, you shouldn't be doing that. Also, what the hell is that? picture in the background what this is a nice background and then there's just this who painted this i don't even know what she's doing this side of her body's missing Ugh, eh, whatever yes he does doesn't he she gritted her teeth unable to take that acidic edge off her voice it wouldn't be so hard all she had to do was grab the neck of the expensive vase and fling it at his head still want to reiterate my point of earlier catherine still illegal uh Still not allowed to do that. Just just in case you weren't aware. She wasn't sure if the vase would break. Maybe not. Maybe she would need to hit him again for the full effect. Catherine, 
Did you hear what I just said? Huh? I said, now that I'm back in town, would you consider playing for me again? Oh. We kind of didn't hear what you said. Sorry. We were sort of too busy ignoring you. <laughs> Thinking. It was part of our original arrangement, after all. She felt the tendons in her neck tighten. I have a full schedule this week, Sire, si, but I'll let you know when I'm free. Oh. Sire, si, I must retire for the night. I am exhausted from my performance, after all. Excuse me. Catherine turned around and went for a coat, but she felt Guillem grab her hand. W wait, um... They stared at each other for a couple of seconds. She doesn't look like she's enjoying this. Just saying. Guillem looked like he was about to say something. His mouth opened and closed as if debating the correct words in his head. But he just dropped Catherine's hand a moment later. I'm sorry, you're right, you must be tired. His shoulders dropped. Catherine felt a tinge of disappointment, but she ignored it quickly. Glem let out a sigh. You know I'm not good at this, Catherine. Oh, uh, what do I know? You seem to do just fine. You have an amazing track record. Huh? Catherine folded her arms over her chest with a pout. Oh no, don't rub in victory! That's the first way to start losing. Oh, that? That is just because of my face. What? Most people think that I am uh, very deep and thoughtful when I stare at them like this. I just run with it. Catherine bit her lip to prevent the chuckle from escaping, but the laughter burst out from her. He hadn't changed at all. Before she could stop herself, a mischievous smile appeared in her lips. No, no, actually, it is your, your inability to make big gestures, Gilly. Huh? Well, look at you. She copied his tight, alert posture. You stand stiff as a board. I guess it fools people into believing you are a graceful, dashing soul. Oh, God. God knows what people think about me, if that's the case. Gilliam made a pout. I am dashing, though. That's a good thing to say. Maybe. Oh, contraire, Miss Sire. I did have the misfortune of being victim to your dancing. Oh, must you always bring that up? It was a long time ago. He looked so distressed that Catherine couldn't help but tease him further. I mourn the death of my little toe, Sire. I like that toe. It was a traumatic experience. Before long, they were laughing like it was the most natural thing in the world. When did it change? Hadn't it always been like this? Catherine settled back into her own skin, mulling the confusion in her veins. Kath, she looked at him. Her own emotions stung her. You can't keep running away from me. She sighed deeply. Her hands tightened around her resolve for lack of a solid thing to hold on to. Perhaps not, but I have already given you an answer. I am aware. I have tried to accept it. Please don't take offence, but I thought it would be easy. I left to clear my head, to fill my mind with other things. Travelling usually does the trick. For a while, at least, I thought I was successful. But even during my trip, I would catch myself thinking such absurd things like, See? You let your defences down. Now you're normal and now he woos you. You fucked, Catherine. Just gotta get over it. I wonder what Kath will say when she sees that. No, I don't think Catherine will like this too much. Mm, well, Kath used to say... It was funny, but also a little... In yeah, look at her face. She's gone. She's completely fallen. But also a little infuriating to know that you have never left my mind. So I wish I knew how to do this. I am. He sighed. I am too used to people leaving me that I do not know how to quit on my own. It must bother you, the amount of lovers I had in the past. I am sorry for that. I almost wish I really was that adept. But like I've told you, most were simply rumours. The rest were people realising I'm not as interesting as they had initially thought. Um, they never stay long, Kath. One could say I'm amazing with first impressions. There is a nagging feeling that that's all I am ever good for. Oh, and now he's bringing out the emo stuff. Jesus. A sort of exotic trophy people like to collect for its sake. But then put aside when his novelty expires. I can't blame them. By now, I'm quite sure that I am what is wrong. I must be better at letting people go. But you? Please don't make me let go. You see through me, Kath. Fucking music. I said it was going to happen. It was going to happen soon. I feel like I'm somebody worth loving. Is it any wonder I'd like to continue thinking of you fondly? Old habits die hard, I suppose. Catherine bit her lip. Those are impressive words, sire, but do you have a point? My point? Uh, simple, really. I I don't think I'll be able to stop my feelings for you. You may reject me as many times as you wish. It will not change. I've already come to the conclusion that I don't mind, he shrugged. 
So I propose that you either get used to me chasing you, or you give in to my dashing, toe-mashing charms. Catherine chuckled despite herself. Or I could just kill you with the Duke's fashionable vase. Please do not give my superior the pleasure. I would rather rip my heart out of my chest and offer it as a dark sacrifice to the gods. Gory! Very poetic dashing points for you! You think so? I've been reading a lot of romance novels lately. Uh, That scares me slightly. What kind of romance novels are you even talking about? I figured I must learn to be more suave to make the lady of my dreams swoon. Is it working? Catherine laughed. Hardly. I believe this is how they do it in the big finale. Glem cleared his throat and knelt down on one knee. <laughs> Wonder if she says yes. Just a... Just a thought. He took Catherine's hand awkwardly, trying to act as natural as he could. His serious face made Catherine burst out laughing. Quell folie. What in the world are you doing, idiot? Stop laughing, madame. I must try this at least once. I'm simply concerned for an older gentleman and his knee. Older gentleman? He still has black hair in the age of when hair dye wasn't a thing. It probably was. Whatever. Will he be able to stand up from that position later, given your obvious grace? Glem chuckled. Terrible day you called me an old man. I don't look my age, you know. Sure, sure. He, he does have perfect skin for someone who's probably quite old. Oh, stop laughing, will you? I'm trying to concentrate. He cleared his throat again. Will Mademoiselle Catherine Paris all allow me an audience tonight? As such, she might allow me to stay by her side for a while longer. It would make me a very happy man. It was sappy and ridiculous, and yet hearing the word did stir Catherine's heart. They were giggling like fools, like children, her heart heavy with love for him. Love? Did she just think love? Of course she did. She'd always loved him. Why was she fighting her feelings again? The reasons seem unclear all of a sudden. Probably because she's right to do so. I mean, think about it, love. You do eventually end up fucked. Just, just pointing that out to you. All right, sire. Your gallantry has convinced this lady to accept your offer for tonight. She bowed with an exaggerated curtsy. Guilherme took her hand theatrically as he stood up. This gentleman is relieved he didn't have to sing. Oh, God. Don't worry, Smiders. If he started singing, I wouldn't put you through that. A few rules for tonight. As we are in Paris, you must be on your best behaviour. No embarrassing jokes like making friends with the street mimes. Agreed? As such, I might retire by eight. Ten. Eight. 9.30. 9, take it or leave it. Why are we haggling? We all know she's not going to be sleeping by 9. Come on, they're just going to be in bed. Glim grumbled, but Catherine chuckled at his frustration. Fine, 9.15 it is. Sire, I meant 9 sharp. Glim's face brightened like a little boy's. Oh, I know where we can go. There's a quaint little piazza just short south of here. Piazza? Oh, okay, square. <laughs> King Al, I thought he meant pizzeria. I was just like, why did I say that like it was Italian? And I was like, oh, hang on a minute. He just means square, doesn't he? Mean... <laughs> My Spanish kicked in. And I was like, hang on. He means plaza, doesn't he? They say they have a breathtaking view of the city. They're on a hill, you see. I know they own it personally, so we guaranteed the best seats. And they serve the best pomme de terre gratinée. God's sake, too many French words altogether there. Gratin again? If you continue eating that at every opportunity, soon there will be no potatoes left in all of France. Catherine sighed. Why must he be so... This better not be a game like all of your other flings, sire. I deserve to be treated like more than a prize. But Catherine watched Guilhem face beam as he talked about that little house on the hill. How when the weather was perfect, the stars would soak the sky. She giggled to herself with fondness. What an adult. A night in Paris and he would rather eat cheesed potatoes. I don't know. To be fair, I'd probably do the same. Cheesed potatoes, those sound amazing. It was just like him to pick the stars instead of a city, wasn't it? It pleased her to know that she adored the side of him that others did not see. But was this the real him? Did she really see through him like he said? Or was this a face he put on her sake, like most flirts could? If it was, then she had been watching this face since she was a little girl. From awe to admiration, from friends to lovers. They had seen the best of and worst of each other through the years. Surely there was something to that. Surely it couldn't all be a lie, right? 
I'm sorry, I got carried away. Shall we go? Yes. We weren't even listening to you again, sir. I don't know how to tell you this. Catherine grabbed her coat and Guillem took her purse. Oh, I almost forgot Rosa is waiting outside. Then let us hurry and meet up with her. I haven't seen her for a long time. I missed her too. It'll be a treat to spend the evening with two esteemed ladies. She'll be thrilled to see you. Just like old times, us three? Yes. She slipped her hand in his arm nonchalantly and caught Guillem's smile to himself. Ah, uh, I can see Mother pissed off at this already. At the very least, let that smile be real. I got slightly taken aback there. Um... <laughs> Did just did just rock back a little bit. This doesn't look like marriage turned out too happily. Jesus. You're lying! Lady Claudette saw you in Nime. Tears tears and snot ran down her face. She was holding a vintage sixteen ten bottle of wine. I don't know what year is it at the moment. That could be completely relevant or completely irrelevant, I don't know. She gripped the neck of the bottle and flung it to the wall where Galen was standing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that, is, that shit's loud, man. He ducked just in time to avoid the glass. Sherry, don't you sherry me, you bastard. Can we not take it out of my wine collection again? Catherine threw another bottle in response. Stop, Catherine, you're going to hurt yourself. Hurt myself like you care. You tell me you're off to Avignon last weekend, but you're actually in Nîmes. May. Why are you making this into a huge deal? So I had to stop over at a neighbouring town. It was... No, it's a lie if you admit things. I told you at the very start of this relationship, Guillem. I want 100% honesty from you. And I've told you as well. I have a reputation. Rumours follow me. Idle mouths can't help but chatter. Do you know that Lady Claudette once indecently proposed to me? And right in her husband... Right in her husband's birthday gathering as well. So, so what? That is all besides the point. You know what they say, where there is smoke, there is fire. How about a name to further torch the bush? La Laine de Montclair. La Laine is the shop girl of the town, a nice girl. Or at least I surmise from all the three times I made the mistake to enter her shop, it looks like. Is there anything else you would like to insinuate? Oh, nothing at all, sire. Why, is there anything else I should know? Ill Christ, we skipped a line there, didn't we? Yeah, Galem sighed and tried to speak calmly. Hmm. Does he just date people and then kill them once he's sick of it? Ugh, that wouldn't be very nice. Cherie, I promised you when we got engaged, didn't I? I will be faithful to only you. There is no one else. But Catherine gritted her teeth. Again with this! You're more vague than a monkey spit! Ask me straight right now. Yes or no, are you having an affair? Get him through his hands up in annoyance. Mad, Catherine, I am not. I have already answered this. Why does it seem like you only hear what you want to hear? I just want to understand everything and make it crystal clear. Is that so bad? See, the thing is, Catherine, is that if you are wrong, yes, this is terrible. This is just every kind of terrible. If it turns out that the shop he went to in Avignon didn't have what he wanted, so he had to go to Nîmes for it, and that was it, and you're throwing wine bottles at him, then yes, you're probably wrong. It is bad. Is he... are you wrong? Probably not, but we'll get to that later. <clears throat> now explain to me what Lady Cadet... Lady Claudette? You are taking that bitter conniving woman's words over mine. <laughs> well, I tried to get the information from the source, but the source isn't very reliable. Guillaume's shoulders slumped in an irritated surrender. She heard him curse under his breath. I'm tired of this, Kath. This is a waste of time. What is the point of this if we keep going around in circles? Catherine snuffled, wiping her nose savagely with her hand. You always do this. You go off on a tangent and pick things apart. You don't even listen to my side at all. Don't listen to a s What? You're throwing wine bottles at him! You expect him to sit there? And just take it? And be like, oh, okay, well, sure, I'll listen to your side. I'll also keep my acrobatics display going on. 